first encounter with creative sound design was at uni. Um, I studied sound and music design um, in the intention of working in the music industry. Uh, and in some of my classes, I actually discovered sound design and I was very kind of challenged by it in a really great way. Um, and near the end of my studies, I won an award for best sound in the Microflix Film Festival, which Spineless Wonders is a part of. Um, and so I reached out to Spineless Wonders about working in the, the, the audio publishing sphere. Yeah. Um, sound design can be so finicky um, because you try a million things over and over again um, to kind of find the thing that fits best even though there are so many things that can fit well you spend so long trying to find the best moment how to best portray something um, but once you have finished and you export a file and listen back to the finished product it's really satisfying <laughs> um, because you've spent so long working on it and you kind of are away from your working brain and more into your kind of listening brain <laughs> and you can think like I did that. <laughs> yeah, it kind of it does run in that kind of sequence. Um, so first I engaged with the text. I read, I read the book um, and then I listened to the narration that was sent through. And then I listened and read it at the same time. And I was kind of thinking which moments will be heightened by sound um, because you don't want to do too much and not every single moment needs needs a sound attached. Um, so yeah, kind of going through and identifying specific moments and you kind of mark them in your session. Um, and then the thing that probably takes the longest is finding appropriate sound effects that are really going to heighten those moments. So you're kind of auditing all of the sound effects that you have um and then the next thing on the to-do list is to kind of integrate them and then make the entire thing flow well as well so this is a moment that kind of reflects the title of the book i suppose <laughs> small cement bricks we slosh mud on that a mud brick goes on more mud another mud brick more mud i love the way the so if you kind of think about what's happening at that moment, they're making a house out of mud bricks and they're putting bricks onto mud and bricks onto mud. And if you think about that, it's actually a bit of a hard sound to, <laughs> to kind of not only think about, but also find um, if you're in the post-production kind of process and rather than recording a sound and you're trying to actually find sound effects it was really hard <laughs> to think about that specific sound um so I wanted to make each of the sounds different to one another otherwise it just sounds like you've just got one thing and you've repeated it um so I found a few different kind of like sloshing sound effects as well as impacts and I tried to meld them together so I've taken a couple of separate elements and put them together to try and replicate what that would actually sound like <laughs> think that it's it's it is challenging finding those sound effects but also kind of tailoring it to your audience as well because you have to think that this is a kids audiobook as well it's, it's made for children um so I think kind of again having that challenge but then figuring out a way to make it work um so I think that in this specific context, I think that kids' audiobooks, they let you do more than you might normally do because you want to grab the kids' attention. So I think it allows you to be a little bit more over the top than you might normally be, um, which is really fun, I think. And yeah, I think that's a really satisfying thing about that specific project. Too. Yeah, yeah, but it, that's kind of in the... Um, in the kind of experimental phase of any project, I think, because you you find so many different things that you can use, but then you 
break them down and try and find the right ones. So I think that it's probably in every moment that sound designed, I'd probably have quite a few different ones, but then you kind of listen over and yeah, you have to find the ones that make you feel most like you're in that space. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that sound design for the most part, you're using it to fit into a certain medium um, and it needs to feel natural, but there are so many different ways that you can approach something. And there are so many different sounds out there that you can use. And there are so many different platforms and everything else. And I think that the one thing I would say to somebody is there are so many different ways to approach something, but the only way that you would ever do it wrong is if it's noticeable. <laughs> because you want to listen to something that has sound design and think this fits in you know this is a part of whatever world you're you're delving into but as soon as something like kind of breaks your attention and it feels off I think that's the only thing that you know you can ever say is is wrong but there are so many ways to explore things yeah <laughs> it was a really fun project and I hope that I get to work on more in the future as well